If the internet is to be believed, then the Prusa i3 Mark III is the undisputed king of consumer level 3D printing. The reason why, pretty obvious, it offers the best features and the most of them for the lowest cost. All of the printers coming from China, which are much less expensive, don't even come close to comparing as far as the features are concerned. But here's the thing, all of those features on the Prusa aren't unique to Prusa. The vast majority of them weren't even developed by Prusa. They were inventions and creations of uh, hackers, DIY types like you and me, who were upgrading and updating their 3D printers, then posting those updates on the internet. Prusa saw those updates and said, hey, that's a great idea. I think I'll put that on my next printer. So there's nothing stopping you and I from updating a Chinese printer to have all of the features that we see on the Prusa. And if you've been watching my series on the Tevo Little Monster, you'll know that that's exactly what I've been doing to that printer. And the results are fantastic. It's definitely a rival for the Prusa at this point, but it's more expensive. Just that stock printer, while it's far superior in frame and bed and all of those uh, features, um, you know, you're gonna spend more money to get the same quality of prints out of, that you're getting out of the Prusa. So, Let's put that one aside, still my favorite printer, and with this video, let's see if we can't get a printer that is better than the Prusa, feature for feature, and costs less money. And the printer to start with that we're gonna upgrade is the Ender 3 by Creality. This is a really solid frame, much better than the Prusa, because you know what? It doesn't have any 3D printed components on it, or zip ties holding key mechanical uh, you know, components to the 3D printed parts. So we've already off to a good start here and we just need to do some upgrades and add some features to it and we'll be good to go. So the first thing I wanna do is put a Duet 3D, that's a Duet Wi-Fi board onto that printer which will give us 32-bit processing, uh, Trinamic stepper sticks with all of the features that that entails and also the ability to print wirelessly. Like you'll be able to do your slicing on the computer and send the print straight from your computer through the Wi-Fi. So fantastic functionality here. Definitely a better board than the Rambo board, which we see on a Prusa. So let's get to work putting this board onto that printer. So we're gonna be basing this whole project around the, uh, the Ender 3 here. And in the review video that I made on this printer, which you can see right over here, uh, I said a couple of things which were incorrect. The first was I devoted a significant amount of time uh, to testing how long it took to heat up the, uh, the heated bed. And it took 20 minutes for me, but you know what? I made a big mistake, you guys. Here on the... Um, power supply, there's that switch that you need to flip uh, in order to run it on 115 volt electricity. So in America, we have 115 volt mains and you know most other countries run 230. And so the power supply comes uh, set to 230 volts, which means that if you plug it in in America, the printer will work just fine, but it's effectively running at 12 volts which is why only 12 volts were heating the bed and it took so long to get hot. Once I flipped that switch, got it to 24 volts everywhere, uh, that heated up nice and quickly. So uh, easy problem to solve. Now, the next mistake I made was um, with the filament holder up on top of the printer. In fact, let's take a look at that for just a second here. If you turn the filament holder around like this, then you have enough gap right there to accommodate the wider rolls of filament. So it's an easy fix, uh, something, you know, I was just looking for criticisms to, to throw at this printer and I was wrong about that one as well. So yeah, this really is a super solid printer and about the only fundamental thing that I kind of am hesitant on is the nylon pulley wheels. Now, they might not be nylon. They might be a fancier plastic than nylon. From what I've read on the internet, uh, that's very likely. But still, if you want to stick this printer into a heated enclosure, which is absolutely something that I wanna do, uh, I'm a little worried that those wheels might behave funny. I would prefer them to be metal, but uh, the extrusions are aluminum, and that's not the best 
surface to have uh, metal pulley wheels riding on. You tend to get this thing called galling and you know you can pit the aluminum, you can dent it. Uh, so I'm going to stick with the nylon pulleys and hope that they don't break down. Also, you know, the belt in the heat here might uh, soften or lengthen or something, but uh, you know, that's uh, something that the Prusa has as well. And if the Prusa is the thing to beat, I'm sure that uh, we can beat it using that belt driven system. Anyway, I'm going to finish taking off this board here uh, off camera and uh, we're going to look at the wiring and how we're going to have to plug it into the duet. Taking a look here at the stock board, I want to see if there's anything salvageable on it. So I popped off one of the heat sinks to look and those are indeed uh, A4988 stepper motor drivers. So just bottom of the line. That's a bottom of the line chip. This is just bare bones, as simple and as basic as you can get it. It doesn't even have a bootloader. So uh, I can only think of one thing to do with this board. The Ender 3 has now been stripped down and these here are the components that we're going to be adding to it. Starting with the Duet Wi-Fi board, uh, of course that's the core of the whole upgrade. And with that board, we're going to be adding this, which is a laser filament detector. And we'll talk about that more here in a second. The 40 millimeter fan here is going to get replaced and we're going to use this um, Noctua 40 millimeter fan instead. So that'll cut down on quite a bit of the noise which comes off of this printer. Finally, we're going to add this uh, BL touch sensor along with the, uh, the wiring, the extended wiring, uh, so that we have automatic bed leveling on this machine. This is the filament sensor that Duet was really kind uh, in providing to me. Now this is a beta test unit and it's a laser filament sensor, so it senses um, the filament moving instead of just sensing the presence of filament or not. My Tevo Little Monster has this optical uh, filament switch. It's not a sensor, it's just a switch. So all it can detect is whether or not there's filament. And so let's uh, extrude that to run out of filament. And you see the switch gets flipped, the light turns off. Um, so that's great because now we can basically just um, pull the filament out like this and we're good to go. Looking at the back side of the Ender 3, we can start to see my problem. Where do I install this sensor? Ideally, it would be installed after the extruder because that way it can detect when filament has stopped moving, either because the filament has run out and it's past the hop gear, or because we've got some sort of a jam like with a flexible filament where it's sort of looped up there and it's, it's not feeding. So this would detect both those conditions. Um, but there's two problems with mounting this right here. The first of which is there are a lot of forces going through this tube and they're trying to spread the tube apart. And with this mount tightened down as tight as I can get it, I can pull pretty hard and just get that um, slippery PTFE tube to pop out of the hole there. So we need a better mount for the PTFE tubing to begin with. And um, the other problem is how do you uh, replace the filament once it runs out. So if the filament feeds past the hob gear and it's all inside of this tube, including this tube, how do you then back the filament out to, um, to replace it? Um, one workaround for this would be to try to replace this here in front of the hob gear, but that would just be problematic. Basically, um, it would let you know when you ran out of filament, but that's all it would tell you because a jammed condition it might still just keep on feeding through the filament, but just building that loop up and instead of pushing it through the tube after the extruder. So to solve these problems, I've modified the geometry, well, the 3D printable geometry provided by Duet, um, and I've turned it into this. So more or less, it's the same, but um, it's got a couple of key differences. There are nuts inside there, which the PTFE tubing threads into, so that secures it. You can't pull that out. That just doesn't move. And then the other thing is when you need to get at the filament. So I currently have some filament in there that's locked in place. I have no way to get at it right here. So I can just pull off the two zip ties here, and there's my filament. So now I can pull that back out, and you can see one of the nuts there um, that secures the, um, the PTFE tube. So once you've pulled it out, you can put that back on there, put your zip ties back on, and um, you're ready to go.
and the surfacing work is done. Now, surfacing work is quite time intensive, and you can see that there's a, a bit of surfacing in this forked um, split air duct, which supplies the part cooling air from the blower here. And also there's some surfacing involved with cooling the, um, the heat sink on the, on the J-head there. Um, there's also a bracket for the BL touch, and all this is all wrapped up into one component, which should print nicely with a minimum amount of support. Um, so you can see down here uh, these little cutouts which I made in my surfacing work, and that's just because it got a little bit too close to the, um, the heater block for my liking. Um, and it takes so long to redo the surfacing that I, I just want to print this up and test it uh, before I make any changes. Design, prototype, test, right? So there's three, well, four issues that I want to fix with this prototype in the next iteration. The first is I want to make it uh, easier to print. You can see the ugly printing right here just because there's an overhang there that's difficult to uh, fix with support material. Uh, the next thing I want to do is get the BL Touch closer to the nozzle. So moving it inboard here, um, and that will just give more accurate readings on the bed. And the third issue, this is probably the biggest issue, is I want to um, get the fan duct here. That's one of these. Bo both sides are symmetrical, but they're they're currently kind of close to the heater block. So they, they clear, they do clear, but they're just, they're so close that I'm worried they're gonna get, um, you know, melted just from being so close. So I'm gonna try to give some more clearance there. And the final issue is up underneath, um, I just wanna lower the whole geometry so that I'm a little bit closer to the bed and also get better directed uh, airflow to the very tip of the nozzle. Man, surfacing work takes a lot of time. But anyway, here we are looking at the, um, the geometry that we were just talking about in the real world. Um, and I have modeled um, some new geometry. You can see this much wider fork so that it avoids the, um, the heat sink until just the last minute. But if you look at this geometry, it flattens out. So that means that my air coming out of this is gonna be blowing straight and I need it to be blowing downwards a little bit as well. So I had to do the surfacing work again, a whole bunch more hours, uh, and that's what you're looking at here. So this should provide a nice uh, you know, directed bit of air right on the very tip, right where the filament is being deposited onto the part. Now, uh, I wanted to get that BL touch closer to the nozzle, like I said, and so in order to achieve that, I had to punch a hole in this now wider fork of the, the surfacing, you know, the air duct there. So, um, I... It, this is printable and it would work in theory, but the more I got to thinking about it, the more problems it, it created. Um, looking at the way that I had to mount the BL Touch here at the top, as well as this hole here in the bottom, and you know, support material inside of that forked geometry, which you're trying to you know pry out somehow. It's just it's a headache and it's not worth it. So I gave up on my goal of getting the BL Touch closer to the nozzle, and it's going to have to sit out wide here somewhere, which is what we're looking at there. So here's the final geometry that I'm gonna print up. Um, you can see the nice uh, duct work there, the surfacing work there, and the BL touch sensor will sit proud of that out there wide, and you can see the way the two fans sit. I twisted this one slightly just to get, uh, again, more clearance around that heater block. So we can see we've left lots of room around the heater block, and I don't think we're gonna have any problems. Let's talk about slicing software for a minute. So uh, in a previous video, I told you guys that I was gonna stop using Kira, but the thing is I was a little bit lazy and I didn't wanna set up the profile for Simplify 3D uh, for using the Tevo little monster. But I really needed to be able to uh, get the support material right uh, on this part. And I know because I tried to print it with Kira and it just wasn't working. So the great thing about um, Simplify 3D is you can go right here to the Tools menu and go to Customize Support Structure, and you can just add or remove support wherever you want it. So like, let's just add some support right here, right? For no good reason. Um, and then you know you prepare to print, and you see the support material that I just decided to put in there. So just being able to uh, you know tell it exactly where you need support and exactly where you don't. Um, gets you the best results. Like Simplify 3D really is worth 120 bucks or whatever it is. It's not that expensive. And 
uh, you know, I wish that I was sponsored by Simplify 3D, that they were giving me this program for free, but they're not. I paid for it, and I'm still sitting here telling you guys it is worth the money. And now that the part is printed, we can really start to see why. Um, this support material is just the easiest stuff to remove ever. So not only can you just fully control how it goes uh, on, like the application of the support material, but when you want to remove it, um, I have have not seen a slicing software that makes support material that's uh, this easily removed. So yeah, that is a challenging part to print, uh, especially in ABS. So what I need to do now is just put these inserts here um, into the holes right there and right there, uh, and that's what the BL Touch will mount to. Now the rest of the holes I can thread um, into the plastic, just mount the screws directly into the plastic. Those are just going to hold the fans, so I don't anticipate any problems uh, with those rattling out or anything. But with the BL Touch, because that is a um, you know a measurement device, I kind of want the uh, the good threads here. So here it is, fully installed. There's the uh, the BL Touch, which uh, should work nicely, and you see the two fans, the Noctua. So the only thing to do now is I want to hot wire the uh, the part cooling fan here to the 24 volts and do the water test just to see how good this thing performs. Yeah, and as you can see, it creates a beautiful little dimple in the water right the, beneath the uh, the nozzle tip. So fantastic results there. Let's take a minute to talk about the less expensive knockoff versions of these products. Now, um, Creality is a pretty good brand coming out of China. Near as I can tell, they don't have any knockoffs on their printers. It's all original components, which makes them uh, a good company. And on top of that, they're the only Chinese company that I know of that's releasing uh, their files open source. So uh, go support Creality because they don't do knockoffs. Now, there are, of course, less expensive versions of these two very premium products, which seem to have a hefty price tag. But here's the thing. The BL Touch was invented by this girl named Paris. She's a Korean. She's not Chinese. Um, and I met her and her family. They are very nice people. Um, I met them at the Bay Area Maker Fair. And, you know, it's a darn shame that the second she had a successful product, there was a crappy version released by China. Right? There's the knockoff. And they're always inferior products, right? They, they price cut, they, they, they give you, you know, crappy components from top to bottom in an effort to make it very inexpensive, which means that it's going to fail on you, it's going to break. So there's two reasons not to buy it. First of all, it's immoral, you're stealing, basically, from Paris and her family. And second of all, you're going to get a worse product. It might work for a little while, but a little while is all you're going to get. And it's the same story with the Duet. Um, this is a fantastic board, just the best on the market. And a ton of time and effort went into developing this board along with the firmware, right? Which is all open source, so that means that anybody doesn't can just copy them. They don't have to go to the time and effort to, uh, to develop it because all the development work has been done. And the people who paid the, co the cost, put the time and money into developing it, are not reaping the rewards when you buy a knockoff. To save 75 bucks or something like that, you're, you're basically stealing from the people who did the hard work, which means that they won't be able to do the hard work into the future and you'll stop getting nice products. So if you like nice things, support original creators. Okay, well, you can see where the printer is. It's uh, about halfway there, and in the next episode, I am going to do the wiring on the Duet. So stay tuned for that one, and thank you for watching. See you next time.